In this video, we are talking about Obsidian, which has always been my absolute favorite Markdown editor. Some of you might remember my first video about it and that I'm using it for my note-taking and writing technical documentation. But I actually discovered that Obsidian can do so much more. With the right community plugins, you can make this a powerful visualizing tool, a project management solution, a Kanban board, create dynamic tables and simplify your entire workflow with macros and custom commands. It's just insane what you can all do with it. I'm going to show you seven incredible community plugins for Obsidian and how I'm using them. I'm pretty sure by the end of this video, everyone who is still using other productivity tools will at least give Obsidian a try. And for the longtime fans, I might have the one or other interesting point about my projects and workflows. So let's start and talk about the best Obsidian community plugins. <laughs> This video is supported by Teleport, a free and open source access proxy that helps you to securely authenticate to all your IT infrastructure like Linux servers, databases, Kubernetes clusters, web applications or remote desktop. You can easily protect your accounts with modern security features such as two-factor authentication or a passwordless login and access your services through the browser or the CLI tool with audit logging and session recording. And the best, it's completely free in the community version. So you can just download and run it in your entire home lab. Or if you'd like to use it in your company, Teleport offers many professional features like auditing, single sign-on and more. It's a great tool, so just check it out. You will find a link to their website in the description of this video. Okay, so to get started with plugins in Obsidian, you need to open the settings menu. Here you will find all the important stuff under community plugins. First, turn off the restricted mode and then you can just click on browse to scroll through all the existing projects, get some more information about them. And of course, you can also search for specific ones. And to make it easy for you, I'll put the names of all the plugins I'm showing you here in the description of this video so that you can easily find and install them. When you're using plugins in Obsidian, always remember these plugins are all made by the community and they are not part of the official Obsidian code. Hence, they can have bugs from time to time. And what you should also keep in mind is that every community plugin, even if it is frequently updated at this time, it might not be maintained forever because mostly these are small projects made by one or a few people. So just be a little cautious using them. <laughs> A good indicator to find active and maintained plugins is always to check what was the last time this plugin was updated, how many downloads it has, and also you should take a look at the project on GitHub. Sometimes the creators put some details in the about section about their efforts, but that's not always the case for sure. That being said, let's now jump right into it and start with the first plugin that I want to show you. And this is called Icon Folder, which is not a really spectacular plugin, you would say but it is absolutely one of my favorites. Because with Icon Folder, you could give the boring file explorer in Obsidian a more customized look by adding icons to it. When you have installed the plugin, you can just do a right click on a folder or on a node and then click on change the icon. Then you can select whatever icon you want. It's pretty simple. I really like this because I'm using the file explorer a lot to navigate through my notes in Obsidian, maybe more than I should, but it really helps me to quickly find everything that I want. As you can see, I've built myself this folder hierarchy where I sort all of my markdown files, like everything I need for my projects, my notes, my Git repos, the work stuff and YouTube videos as well. Every folder has a recognizable icon, so this helps to quickly jump into the right section and I also think it looks pretty neat. In the plugin settings menu, you can also customize the look and feel of it, like adding different icon packs into your Obsidian Vault or change colors and adjust the icon size and so on. So one thing that I should probably mention here is when you install these icon packs into your Obsidian Vault, they are stored in a dot folder underneath your regular file structure. And if you don't pay attention to it and you include it in the vault itself, it can get a bit laggy when you're trying to synchronize it because every icon is a separate 
separate PNG file in that folder and I've had the situation once that when I'm using OneDrive or Git repos for example these synchronization processes can take a pretty long time which is really annoying when you want to access your vault across mobile phones. On my iPad and iPhone it works pretty well with iCloud however if you have an icon pack containing thousands of icons it might take some time doing the initial sync. If you're just working on your PC or Mac and you don't synchronize your walls, it shouldn't be an issue, but yeah, that is something you should definitely keep in mind. But apart from this, Icon Folder is just a great plugin that gives your Obsidian Vault a nicer and more custom look. Next, I want to show you another customization plugin, which is called Commander. With that, you can add any commands in Obsidian as a separate button somewhere in the UI. You can put these into different places, like in the ribbon menu, the tab bar, the status bar, and so on. And you can create all sorts of these commands. You can give it a custom icon. Icon, a different color and create your own styled menus. As you can see in the ribbon menu of Obsidian for example I've hidden all the boring default buttons of Obsidian and created my own custom list of ribbon commands with a more stylish look. What's also really cool you can even create macros with this plugin that will execute multiple commands at once even on startup of the program and with a delay. To be honest I haven't really figured out how to integrate these macros into my workflow yet. I I'm still experimenting with that. But what's really nice about Commander is that this doesn't just work with the regular commands you have in Obsidian, it can also be used with any other command that your plugins will add to Obsidian. So anything that you can type in the Obsidian CLI can be added as part of a macro or as a separate button. And that makes Commander in my opinion very powerful because you can really make the most out of any other community plugin with automating it in a Commander button. So I'm going to show you that in a combination with the next plugin. And this is called Quick Add. With Quick Add you can just as the name suggests, quickly add new nodes into your vault. To be fair, it can also do a couple of other things which I haven't really figured out yet because I'm only using this for adding new nodes with templates to specific folders. That's, in my opinion, the most useful feature. For example, I've created a quick add function that will start a new video project for me. So when I execute this quick add, it automatically creates a new markdown file in the YouTube video folder with a specific template that I can directly start working with. But let's build a new quick add together so I can show you a couple of things. I'm going to add a new quick add template in here that is called test node. So this should create a new markdown file with a specific template somewhere. And to specify these settings we need to click on that small gear icon and here we can now select the template that we want this node to be created with. For example let's just add the template that I'm using for creating my YouTube video documentation. You can also define if you want this node to be created with a specific file name and a format, maybe with the current date. But I don't want to do that now because I like to always enter a new file name when I'm executing this quick add, so I will just leave this empty. Instead, I like this node to be created inside a specific folder. So I'm going to pick the testing folder in here that's easier for a quick demonstration. But of course, you can use this to create nodes to any other folder in your vault. And let's also directly open this file, so maybe in a vertical split, so we can start working on this project right away. Okay, so far so good. So now we have our quick add function and when we now go back to our main editing view, we can just execute it by typing in the command run quick add and then just select the test node one that we have just created. You can see this opens a prompt to enter a file name just like we wanted. And when we just enter a new file name in here and execute it, you can see this created our new file in our testing folder and also with the desired template. So that's already pretty useful to speed up your entire workflow in Obsidian. But wait, it gets even a bit better. <laughs> because like I said, you can also use these quick add commands in combination with commanders. To do that, you just need to click on this small lightning icon here to make this quick add a separate command in Obsidian. And what's really cool, now we can create a new button in Commander for this specific quick add command. I just need to open the Commander settings and let's create a new button in the Explorer window for example. I just type in the quick add command that was created for the test node. Give it a useful name for the command button and a cool icon of course. Maybe something like this video icon. So that should be nice. And after that let's also select a 
nice color, maybe a red for a YouTube view or something. Uh, so here we have our new button right in the file explorer and when I click on it, it just executes the quick add function test node that we have defined. So we need to give our new file a name and yeah, you can see it works just like before. It adds a new file in our testing folder and opens it directly in a new vertical split all with just one simple click. So this is absolutely amazing. And remember, this is just a very basic example of how quick ads and Commander works together. You can of course also use these two plugins in many other ways. Yeah, combine different actions and macros in one single command or button that you frequently use, create predefined types of files with specific links or templates. The sky is the limit and you can really use that to build any sorts of workflows that fit into your process. So that would really make your life in Obsidian a lot easier. No, like I said, that's enhancing my productivity a lot, especially when I'm working on my new video projects where I quickly want to create a new markdown file to write down something or edit a script and so on. And don't worry, we will go through more of these useful plugins. The next one is Advanced Table, which you might already remember from my first Obsidian video, but it shouldn't be missed in this list here. So this plugin enables a new button in the right sidebar that you can use whenever you're editing a markdown table. Now, markdown tables are kind of difficult to handle. Yeah, just like this one, when you are editing it, you can see it automatically switches to this markdown editing mode. And when you would want to change something in this table here, you would always need to mess around with this markdown formatting, copy and pasting values between these separators. It's just horrible to do it manually. Advanced tables helps you a bit with this. Like you can use it to move rows and columns around or add new entries in between other items. That's very useful when you want to add a column inside a big table, for example. Remember, when you would need to do that manually, you would have to add this new column to every single row of the table. That's what advanced table does automatically for you. So you just need to jump right into the rows and fill in the data. And you can even use it to automatically sort rows in a table. So it's a small little plugin that's helping a lot with markdown tables. However, the markdown tables are still pretty static in Obsidian. That's why I'm using a different plugin to create sorts of dynamic objects and tables. And this is really one of the most incredible plugins for Obsidian, which might even change your entire view on this program. And it is called Data View. Data View is used by adding so-called metadata to your notes. So one way to do that is simply put it in between three dash characters at the beginning of the note, like I've done it in this example and this basically is just a list of key value pairs where you can define relevant information about this node. And what's special about this metadata is that it is indexed and can be queried by the data view plugin in other nodes. It is extremely powerful. You can see it a bit like a database, but without having a backend or a database file somewhere that you would need to connect to, it's all stored and indexed from the metadata, which is just plain text in your markdown files. Just a quick example, because it's really difficult to explain otherwise. So here we have a note containing the write-up for one of my YouTube video projects. yeah. And this first section here is the metadata section where I've added a couple of fields containing relevant information for this project. For instance, I've added a status to it, a thumbnail, an SEO score, a published date, a sponsor, a title and so on. And just like this, I have created similar notes for all the other videos that I'm working on. Basically, you can add any relevant metadata to any of your markdown files in the vault. You can just put text fields in here, you can put dates in here. There are many other types of key value pairs that you can create. And once you have done that, you can use data view in another node to query your entire vault and create a list or a table of these nodes. For example, let's create a table with all the published YouTube videos that I've made and documented in my vault with this metadata. To do that, I'll just need to start a new code block, just like you would define some YAML or shell script in here and you just need to add the data view language to this block 
And then you can use the data view query language that's pretty similar to SQL statements. So this will be very familiar to all the database pros here. <laughs> and we will start first with the type of the object that we want to create. This will be a table. And now we can display different fields of the metadata. For example, let's display the video title, the SEO score, the publish date and the status. Next, I also want to select which type of nodes this list should contain because if you have many different nodes in your vault with all sorts of different metadata, you can filter it a bit based on the folder location or based on tags. And to do that, you just need to add a from statement. So I want to select the YouTube videos folder. And because this would display all the YouTube videos, I want to further filter it based on the metadata section. For instance, let's only display the nodes that have a status set to archive. This is what I enter in the metadata section of all my published videos, for example. And we should maybe also sort this table by date, so I think that makes the most sense. If we now go out of this code block, you can see DataView generates a dynamic table with all the nodes in my YouTube videos folder that match our query. I'm still speechless how powerful this is. Yeah, you can see this table contains all the archive project. I can hover over the individual items and I can even click on it to go directly into the selected node. Of course, you can do so much more with it. I can't cover it here in this short video. Yeah, but if you want to have a more detailed tutorial about data view, I can just recommend the YouTube channel Nicole van der Hoven. Hope I pronounced this correctly, I'm sorry if not. But she's doing so many great videos about Obsidian, like detailed videos about data view and also some other cool Obsidian plugins. So just go to her channel, subscribe and leave a comment that I've sent you there. There's really some good stuff on it. Of course, you will find a link to her channel in the description down below. And what you might also do is just check out the official documentation page page of data view. So there you will also find great write ups with technical documentation about the different data types, the data view query language and syntax. I bet while watching this, you already have one or two ideas in your mind how you could use that in your day to day work in Obsidian. For example, you could build a home dashboard in Obsidian where you display all the tasks of your entire world in a single list or track all your projects across different folders and tags, filter it based on the status or or what needs to be done in a few days. You can use this in so many different ways. So I'm pretty sure you're all hooked now. However, the next community plugin even takes data view to the next level because some of you might ask now, so how can you use this metadata to manage even more complex projects yeah, and keep a better track of your items, maybe in a Kanban board or in a calendar view. And there is another amazing plugin existing exactly for this, which is called Project. And this turns Obsidian into a fully fleshed project management solution, which uses metadata to display and filter your notes in different ways. So it seamlessly integrates in all the stuff you, that you're already doing with data view. For example, I'm using this project plugin to plan and document all of my YouTube videos. So here in the main project view, you can create and manage all your different projects. These can be created based on notes that are located in a specific folder or have a specific text. You can even filter it based on a data view query. That is really amazing. And then when you have defined your projects, you can create views to display the notes in your projects in many different ways. So this includes things like a table, a calendar, a Kanban board or a gallery. You can create as many views as you want, yeah? create different filters and specify different fields that should be visible there. It's really great to organize and manage your home lab projects or if you are a content creator like me, manage your YouTube videos. yeah. Basically, whatever you want. <laughs> Always remember, this is still based on metadata that you have added to all your nodes. You can really combine these two plugins in a cool way, but of course, it will require some time to figure out how to use data view, the project plugin, and how to build the metadata to really establish a productivity workflow. To be honest, this is probably the only hurdle of Obsidian and these community plugins. Yeah, you can do amazing things with it, but it requires a bit of time to learn how they work. It's probably not as simple as other tools that are more 
plug and play. However, if you're willing to invest some time into these things, I, I believe you can build yourself a much more customized and much more personalized experience. And what I still love the most in Obsidian in general, it's all in the end just plain markdown text files. So you can easily export and back up your entire world, all your projects, all the nodes and the attributes without being afraid of losing these logical connectivities between the nodes. Anyway, this is how I've built my own content creation and management system with Obsidian. I'm using it to plan my projects, to write all the documentation, organize all the stuff. Honestly, this was probably the most useful plugin for me. However, there is still one more that I need to show you quickly to finish this list, which is called Excalidraw. You might have already seen it in other videos from me where I've shown you some visualizations or diagrams, because that's what I'm using to create these hand draw style whiteboards. It's actually not only a plugin, yeah, you could also use Excalidraw outside of Obsidian. There's also a paid version with some additional collaboration features for teams. But this is such a great visualization tool that is natively integrated in your Obsidian vault so you can link these Excalidraw files to other nodes and this really changed my entire process of creating visualizations. Yeah? Before I was always using my iPad with the Apple Pencil to draw some visualizations myself but I actually found out that I'm much much faster with just using Excalidraw because even when this looks like a quick handwritten document or visualization all of these things in here are separate objects so that means you can easily change and move them around. And with that you can create some beautiful whiteboards with a handwritten style that just look nice and you can create buttons with it, you can use arrows, lines, images. I'm sure I don't need to walk you through Excalidraw because it's all very intuitive and self-explaining. If you have any questions or you just want to hang out and talk about Obsidian, I can recommend the official Obsidian Discord, cool people there. And if you have any other ideas for Obsidian plugins that I haven't mentioned yet, Please put it in the comments down below. I think I've covered all the plugins that are most important to me. Sure, there is much more we could talk about, but I think that's enough for today. So maybe in the future, I'll make a second round of new Obsidian community plugins that I've discovered. Only when it makes sense, of course. <laughs> Anyway, make sure to like and subscribe if you're up for more tech and home lab content. And as always, thanks everybody for watching. I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.